Southern Africa produces almost a third of the Earth's biomass burning or BB aerosol particles. Yet, the fate of these particles and their influence on regional and global climate is poorly understood. Oracles or observations of aerosols above clouds and their interactions is a five year investigation with three intensive observation periods designed to study key processes that determine the climate impacts of African BB aerosols. To give us more details, because I'm, I'm not a scientist, I'm here uh, in studio with Jens Redeman, the principal investigator for the NASA Oracle's Clouds Project, as well as Hilma Nyalwa, who's from the University of Namibia, and she's a remote um, sensing lecturer. Guys, good morning, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. I, I sounded like I knew everything. Yes. In fact, that's why you guys are here, to give us more details. Let's start off with you, Jens. Uh, what is the Oracle's Project about? in terms of um, uh, climate change. Okay. Uh, well, you summarized it quite nicely. We're trying to uh, understand some of the properties of the biomass burning aerosol that, that happens to be produced every year in the summer. Uh, it gets transported out over the ocean and it interacts with uh, clouds. Um, quite interesting. Hilma, how is climate change measured and observed as a real phenomenon? So um, for us um, as remote sensor, remote sensing scientists, what we are interested in is physical variables that enables us to get some insights into the climate change. So in most cases we use um, some um, satellite um, instrument uh, that enables us to look at the sea surface temperature for example so that we get some long-term trends of, 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 of the physical variables like uh, surface temperature or the precipitation rainfall mm -hmm. so that we are able to uh, 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 get some trends of that that enables us to, to have long-term uh, trends that in, um, somehow uh, uh, tells us if there is climate change or not. So you, you keep the data and yes. in the long term compare it, yes. is that it? Yes. Um, I'd like to find out from you, Jens, how does Namibia benefit from, from this NASA project? Uh, there are three ways in which Namibia benefits, actually. The first one is clearly economic. We bring a large team. We had over 100 people in uh, Swakopmund this year um, taking care of the two aircraft that are flying for us. Uh, so we, have, we need a lot of goods and services. Um, more importantly are the knowledge products that we're providing. Um, the, the data that we're collecting tells us something about regional climate as much as global processes. Uh, it also tells us about ocean ecosystem health. Uh, it can also tell us something about uh, the fog, the near coastal fog. That's an important moisture source uh, for your ecosystems. But most importantly, I believe it's the capacity building effort that uh, Hilma was involved with. We have a, a student shadowing program, for example, in which we are uh, involving uh, a, a group of uh, graduate students in every step of our operation, essentially. Uh, we're uh, exposing them to uh, um, all the NASA tools. All of our data are publicly accessible to the world, uh, that we're collecting every data piece is publicly as accessible, and, and we're helping the students to uh, utilize the data for their projects, and that then in turn benefit Namibia. And, and where is it accessible? Is it on the net? That's correct. Okay. Uh, there's a, a data embargo period for about a year or, or so in which the, the invis investigators get to look at the quality of their data. But after that, NASA data policy is that it's publicly released. Every bit and byte of data is publicly released on the Internet. Quite interesting. Let's talk about the BBS unique cloud formation, I understand. Could you give us more insight? Yeah, there are three of these uh, stratocumulus cloud decks, one off of Namibia, one off of South America, one off California, where our NASA center is. But it, the, the unique part is that here it really interacts with these biomass burning areas and these interactions happen globally but they're most easily studied here because the clouds are nicely well behaved they're very stratiform uh, and uh, so in that regard it's completely unique Namibia gives us what we like to call the perfect natural laboratory to study things that go on globally but they're most easily studied here so Namibia is making a great contribution to global climate Fantastic. Science. At least we're doing our part. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Hilma, uh, talk to us. You are part of the shadowing team. Um, give us more insight. Talk to us about it. What have you learned? So with me regarding the, um, the, the, the shadowing team, because I'm a remote sensing lecturer, mm -hmm. and in Namibia sometimes we tend to have limitations with the capacity um, in, when it comes to uh, having real life uh, 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 practical scenarios, for example, to give to the students when you're doing the lecturing, for example. Mm -hmm. So for me, this was very useful in a sense that I was um, uh, uh, given an opportunity to come into contact with some of these instruments um, some of which we just talk in from uh, the textbooks. So it, it helps me um, uh, uh, 
be able to come um, to the lecture room with some insights from uh, a local um, uh, perspective and that enabled me to uh, improve my teaching for example. As a lecturer, how do you think this impacts your, your students when they don't really have access to some of these instruments? You know, to fully understand and comprehend something, you need to sort of interact with that. Exactly. Uh, do you think the performance sort of is lowered? Um, I, I think that might um, um, affect in, in the way in, in, in which a student maybe try to digest the information mm -hmm. if they don't really have um, um, like a, a relatable kind of uh, mm -hmm. scenario or an example to relate to the mm -hmm. content. And when you have um, uh, data sets, for example, that you could give and, and, and the type of uh, uh, information that I brought along, some of the pictures and, and, and being able to explain it um, uh, to them in, 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 in such a way that they are able to see and, yeah. and, and the fact that it's based off the cost of Namibia, that was very um, enlightening to the that, students. That's, yes. that's very exciting. I hope one day we'll be able to, to do this ourselves with the help of NASA, of course. Um, uh, Jens, what are the plans for 2017? Well, uh, we had the largest operation last year in 2016 with two aircraft. This year we we're hoping to bring one aircraft only. Uh, we're going to uh, hopefully be permitted to bring in about 70 scientists again during the month of August. We're going to do a lot of flying all over the uh, Southeast Atlantic again. Uh, we're struggling with some uh, new bureaucratic uh, uh, hurdles that we are encountering, but we're, we're doing our best. And uh, just like this year, we're hoping to be received uh, as well as we were last year, both by the public and by, by the government with its support. Well, bureaucracy from which side? Our end or your end? Oh, there's always bureaucracy, uh, understandably. The red, ta red tape, it's, hey? It's, that's correct. It's, it's, but it is a complex problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you look at the complexity of, of, of everything that's involved in flying research aircraft from yeah. a foreign uh, entity, I, I understand that there's, that there's bureaucracy involved. And what will the focus be this August? Uh, well, there's a seasonal cycle to this biomass burning as it goes on. It happens to be a little bit further north this year around, so we need to reach a little bit further north into the uh, southeast Atlantic. All of our flying is over the ocean, by the way. But um, it's the same concept, same physical processes that we're after. We're just are trying to see whether there's a seasonal cycle relative to last year where we went in September and next year when we're hoping to go in October. Right. The students that are shadowing, as well as yourself, how exciting is this for you? I mean, it must be. I can just imagine. It is exciting in such a way that, um, like for example, um, the, the whole concept around the shadowing team is to build a capacity. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the students get teamed up with some of the instrumentation um, teams and then you get to have uh, 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 some of the scientists explain to you how the instruments work. You get to interact with the instruments data as well. And then you get also to see, um, uh, for example, during uh, the last year campaigns, uh, the scientists after having gone out to uh, uh, um, um, after the flights, yes. in most cases, they bring their data sets to, um, to, 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 to everyone and try to present uh, the preliminary results, for example. Mm -hmm. So that's how exciting for me and for the rest of the that, shadowing team as well. That is pretty cool, I must add. Yes, yes. Not to mention that every one of the students got a chance to fly on the aircraft exactly. with us, as a matter of fact. That's yes. I'm afraid some of them got a little bit seasick but, or, or airsick, but First time for a few, there's right? a price for everything. Exactly. exactly. Um, let's talk about how Namibians, Namibians can get involved because we tend to shy away from such subjects. We don't really know what the benefits there are or thereof are. So explain to us how we can benefit from this. Um, the the benefit and the whole idea behind the shadowing uh, program, for example, is to have several um, students from different um, higher institutions in Namibia, for example, NAST. Um, like, for example, um, last year we have had um, six students who are coming in from NAST and from the uh, uh, University of Namibia. But you're from the uh, University I'm of I'm from the Namibia. University of okay. Namibia, and, and most of these are postgraduate students who are doing research that is related to atmospheric sciences. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, uh, uh, this year as well, is to expand that uh, a, a shadowing program to have at least maybe 15 to 20 students coming in again from the higher institutions so that they are given an opportunity to um, uh, 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 for capacity building in this area and also um, uh, uh, oracles is not just so to say a NASA project mm -hmm. um, it's a partnership between NASA and also some um, I mean Namibia so you have some scientists from University of Namibia and NAST who are involved with the project and they have uh, uh, research projects that are affiliated to the oracles project as well quite interesting there, there are other ways, by the way, uh, in, in which uh, uh, there one can get uh, 
involved. So we have an open house activity each year. Last year in September, this year we are planning it for August 10th, where basically me media and students get to look at the aircraft and go get to tour all of our operations, mm -hmm. basically. That was exciting last year with over 100 young learners from local schools in, in Swakopmund and Walfish uh, uh, visit us. Um, and uh, I, I believe the U.S. Embassy has volunteered to hand out information. They organized the open house activity. They would like to yeah. share that information again when, if and when it becomes available for this year's And I hope operation. the rural kids from rural areas get involved this time around because they hardly get to uh, see these things. Right. Let's touch on the whole reason behind this project, of course, is climate change and observing that. To our viewers who are watching, can you explain the repercussions of, uh, you know, not changing the, the lifestyles we lead, so to say, as countries when it comes to our industries that contributes to climate change? Would you like to take that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a complicated pr problem because it involves, as you're saying, lifestyle and, and policy making, and, and a lot of things have to be considered in that. Um, it, it is obvious that humans are affecting climate, uh, and uh, most of that is due to the emission of greenhouse gases that are warming climate. There are a lot of things we have to study and learn, though, f through projects like Oracles uh, that, that we don't quite understand about the climate system yet. Um, it, is, it is safe to say that we are heading down a very treacherous path of, of warming, and uh, there may be very, very disastrous consequences if we don't take action at some point in the near future. And then there are those who believe that climate change is not real. What do you say to that? Well, we, um, uh, th there's only one answer in that. In, in the climate change community, in the scientific community, there is no, uh, there, there is no contention about this pro yeah. project. Ninety-seven percent of all climate scientists agree that there is climate change and it is human-made. Um, so just because you can put up uh, so-called experts from, uh, that have other motivations to, to say otherwise does not mean that there's really no consensus. The climate change community is very uh, is, is in consensus about this. Right, so well, Project Oracle, August once again, you guys will be back and uh, flying further, you say? A uh, little bit further north, but essentially the same, same type of flying over the Southeast Atlantic. Correct. All right, guys, all the best. I'm sure your students are having fun as well as yourself. Exactly. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Thank you. There you go.